Hello and welcome. My name is Benjamin Berger and in this video I want to talk about an incredible new discovery of an early Jurassic mammal called Cayentotherium, which is discovered from the early Jurassic Cayenta formation of northern Arizona. Cayentotherium is a member of a bizarre group of proto-mammals called Tritylodontidae, or the three knobbed teeth. They're named as such because they have three knobs that are on their posterior molar-like teeth. Now, their front incisor-like teeth were procumbent, meaning they kind of stuck out um, a bit like what you see in modern rodents and rabbits. Hence, Tritylodontidae were often seen as a unique group of early mammals by paleontologists. However, today, the group is recognized as a sister group uh, to the more, uh, more closely related to the most extinct group of early true mammals, which arose during the late Triassic from probably from a common ancestor sometime in the middle to early Triassic. So the oldest true mammal uh, or mammalia form is Morganucodon, which is known from the late Triassic and early Jurassic, so a contemporary of this particular fossil. Cayentotherium gives us a unique view of an animal that was nearly, nearly, but not quite a true mammal. And this new discovery really changes our view of these early proto-mammals or cynodonts, the proto-mammals of the Triassic period. The specimen was collected in 2000 in the Navajo Nation from the Cayenta Formation, which is a thin, silty unit of coarse to fine grain clastic sediments that represent a fluvial system or a river system that interfingers with an Aeolian sandstone of the, uh, the early Jurassic Navajo Formation. So an ancient dry dune field that existed in the, in the sort of southwest region of the United States during the late Triassic and early Jurassic periods. So this fossil lived in a semi-arid environment. Fossils from this period of time are very rare and not well preserved. And such a discovery was very lucky for Pamela Owen at the University of Texas who discovered the specimen while working with an eco-scout group from Arizona. They found the specimen in an unusual soft mudstone dominated unit in the formation. And they successfully jacketed this specimen in plaster and carried it out to be prepared in the laboratory. The zircon dates indicate that the specimen is about 183.7 million years old, placing it in the early Jurassic period, which begins at 200 million years ago. So this fossil is it is really old. What makes this particular specimen so spectacular is that it has tiny babies within it. The babies were discovered nine years later as the specimen was being prepared by Sebastian Egberts, a preparator in the lab, who noticed, noticed these tiny pieces of enamel or teeth within the belly of the skeleton. Knowing that this was weird, he stopped preparing the specimen, noting that the fossil may have been pregnant when the creature died. Because the baby bones were so teeny and small and delicate, they could not prepare the blocks of rock using conventional methods like tiny little needles. So they held onto the specimen to be scanned by an X-ray CT scanner. Timothy Rowe at the University of Texas used three different X-ray CT scanners, each one giving some little hint of complete, possibly complete baby fossilized skeletons in these rocks. But they were all very difficult to see until the development of a very high-end, very customized micro X-ray CT scanner that was used for the first time in 2013, which allowed the differences in the density between the rock and the bone to be separated on these tiny baby bones. Using the acquired slices, the skeletons of the tiny babies were reconstructed from the digital scans. The scans of each chunk of rock reveal the inner fossilized skeletons of numerous baby Cayentotherium, likely encased within 
unlaid eggs retained in the mother's belly or just hatched and pressed into the cavity of their mother. The authors use the term perinate to describe them as not to side either way in terms of how they came to be. Now many reptiles retain eggs within the body and exhibit live birth. And this may have been the reproductive strategy for Chiantotherium. Now unfortunately no eggshell was found, uh, which may have been soft like a reptile eggshell, and maybe even retained within the body cavity of the mother. So if Chiantotherium gave live birth, it would be the first known occurrence of live birth in the fossil record. Even later true mammals like um, modern platypus and echidnas uh, still lay eggs. So this is actually pretty exciting. The next really unusual thing about these babies was their number. At least 38 babies were found within the cavity of the adult skeleton. This is the highest birth rate or clutch size of any extant mammal and is more similar to the number seen in reptiles which can get up to 100 eggs at a time. So this is a very primitive trait. The other unusual thing about these babies was their appearance. They lack the big head, the big doughy eyes seen in modern mammalian babies. Hence they resemble just miniature versions of the adult. This is referred to as isomeric growth in which the proportions of the animal remain the same as they grow throughout their life. Baby alligators, which have isomeric growth, look just like miniature versions of the adult. Yet baby humans have much larger heads and faces compared to the rest of their bodies. Mammals tend to develop larger brains earlier than the rest of their body, such that when mammals are born, they have large skulls than compared to the limbs and torso of the body. These baby Chiantotherium look just like the adult, but smaller. Hence, isomeric growth was the primitive method of ontogeny or growth within these proto-mammals. Now, Psychonodon, which is another early proto-mammal from the early Jurassic period of China, also shows a similar isomeric growth pattern. What I think is interesting is that this, is, this evidence suggests that these early proto-mammals likely did not secrete milk. Such large clutches would be difficult to feed. The origin of milk within mammals may have been much later than paleontologists had previously thought and may have originated during the later Jurassic or even into the Cretaceous period. You know, it's really interesting if that's the case and milk was not secreted in these early mammals, the development of the secondary, uh, secondary palate in the Permian and, and, and in the uh, Triassic period of the early cynodonts uh, may have been sort of a pre-adaptation for the eventual development of milk um, that, was, that was quite a bit later on into the Mesozoic. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting idea and it'll be interesting if we can follow it up with additional studies. I have a link below to the original paper if you would like to learn more and I hope you like this video. I want to do a shout out to my Patreon supporters Octodus1811, Justin Bovey, and Pablo Luzato Figuez and all my Trilobite supporters for keeping these videos coming and making them freely available on YouTube. I'll be posting new videos each week and some of these videos I'll be putting into my vertebrate paleontology lecture series as new or supplemental videos. So if you want to watch these videos in order, uh, click on the playlist below and you can follow them in sequential order and which is basically an online course looking at the evolution of vertebrates. So thank you for watching and take care.